I'm not ashamed. How many Merarites qualified for the service of the tabernacle? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of Numbers on Walking Through the Bible. If you have a Bible with you, turn to Numbers chapter 4. We're going to be reading from verses 42 to 49. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Numbers chapter 4, beginning at verse 42. Those of the families of the sons of Merari who were numbered by their families, by their father's house from 30 years old and above, even to 50 years old, everyone who entered the service for the work of the tabernacle of meeting, those who were numbered by their families were 3,200. These are the ones who were numbered of the families of the sons of Merari, whom Moses and Aaron numbered according to the word of the Lord by the hand of Moses. All who were numbered of the Levites, whom Moses and Aaron and the leaders of Israel numbered by their families and by their fathers' houses, from thirty years old and above, even to fifty years old, everyone who came to do the work of the service and the work of bearing burdens in the tabernacle of meeting, those who were numbered were eight thousand five hundred and eighty. According to the commandment of the Lord, they were numbered by the hand of Moses, each according to his service and according to his task. Thus, they were numbered by him, as the Lord commanded Moses. Over the last five lessons, we've been studying the specific duties of the Levites as it concerned the tabernacle. The house of Aaron served as priest, but there was much more to the service of the tabernacle than just offering sacrifices. When the Israelites broke camp and set up camp, the tabernacle needed to be deconstructed and constructed again. This task was too large for just three men to do, so the three families of the Levites were chosen for this service. Due to the arduous labor involved, only men between 30 years old and 50 years old were chosen. The Kohathites, once the holy things had been covered by the priests, were in charge of transporting those things. That would have included the Ark of the Covenant, the Table of Showbread, the Golden Candlestick, and the two altars, as well as all of their utensils. They would have carried those things on their shoulders, using the staves provided for that purpose. The Gershonites were responsible for the coverings of the tabernacle and its court. Once the holy things were removed, all of the coverings would have been removed and folded for transport. Once the coverings were removed, the Merarites would then deconstruct the skeleton of the tabernacle and the court. The skeleton included fittings that would be placed in the ground, posts of acacia wood, and bars that kept the tabernacle structure together. This job, I believe, was the most labor-intensive due to the sheer weight of the posts and the fittings. In our last lesson, we found out that the Kohathites had 2,750 men who were qualified for this work of the tabernacle, qualifications being males between 30 and 50 years old. This represented about 32% of all males of Kohath age one month and above. Of the Gershonites, we learned that there were 2,630 males who qualified for the service of the tabernacle, representing about 35% of all males of Gershon, aged one month and above. Coming out of verse 42, we discuss the family of Merari. When Moses numbered this family in chapter 3, we find that it was the smallest of the three families of the Levites, numbering only 6,200 males, one month old and above. However, for the service of the tabernacle, Merari had the greatest number of males who qualified, being 3,200 males. This would represent about 52% of that family. This might also be a, another explanation for why the family of Merari was selected for the task that they were. Remember, bearing the skeleton of the tabernacle was the most labor-intensive work of the three families. Therefore, one would need more people to be able to do this work effectively. So although it cannot be said for certain, it is possible God selected the family of Merari for the service of the tabernacle for this reason as well as any carpenter skills that they might have had. All told, there were 8,580 men who qualified among the families of the Levites for the service of the tabernacle. These numbers would be required for such a large service. The tabernacle was not just a hut at the end of the street, but a large complex with intricate details that was needed to be paid attention to. It is when Israel neglected those details that they got themselves into trouble later on. In their history. So coming to the end of chapter 4, we have completed the first 
full census of the children of Israel. The total numbers that we found thus far are 603,500 men of war in Israel, plus 22,000 Levites who would be able to serve the needs of the tabernacle, of which 8,580 Levites were currently able to serve. Of course, women and most children were excluded from those numbers, meaning that the Israelites numbered over 1 million and quite possibly over 2 million. It is no wonder that, along with the signs that God was performing among them, that the nations around Canaan were beginning to sit up and take notice of their presence. Beginning in our next lesson, we're going to review a couple of the laws that we studied in Leviticus, as well as being introduced to some laws that we haven't seen thus far. With that, our time is up for today. Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Numbers chapter 5, verses 1 to 10, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Of